were using for finding chi square distribution but here also, <clears throat> this is also we are using for finding the regression how let us see so let us consider there are n number of independent variables namely xi where i varies from 0 to n so there are n number of <coughs> independent variables so depending upon this independent variables xi we are getting yi the corresponding independent n number of or n plus 1 number of independent sorry dependent variables so we have got xi means number of independent variables and corresponding which we are also getting yi means the corresponding dependent values so that you are getting some ordered pairs namely xi yi so such order pairs we are then after getting the list we are then plotting them so in plotting them <clears throat> we are getting a diagram whenever you are plotting them in <clears throat> xy plane better i can say in xy plane so we are getting a <clears throat> figure and that the name of the figure is scatter diagram okay the name of the figure is scatter diagram from this scatter diagram we are just selecting the best fit so that we can able to find a regressional line or we can able to get a linear line okay so whenever we are just trying to find the line or fitting the line the concept we are using the name of the concept is by the method of least squares so what is the method of least squares this method of least square also it was given by gauss what this method of Least squares defined. It simply says whatever the line we have just got, the considering those other pairs are considering those points. The square of or the sum of squares. The sum of squares of the difference between. the projected line and that of the coordinates or the points should be minimum so whatever the projected line let us consider the projected line is your k0 plus k1x and here the distance measured in vertical direction only am i clear what is the what is method of least squares the sum of squares of the difference between the projected line and the distance from the particular point that has given the best fit so that their sum should be minimum but you have to keep it in your mind as i have said these points are independent and these points are independent means whatever the independent variables we have just taken they are assumed to be normal assumed to be normal means <clears throat> the mean should be zero and the variance should be a constant value that is the first concept without considering or without assuming this one we cannot apply the method of least squares okay so that 
the entire projectile line must satisfy the value of mu or certainly we can write this one is mu x so as i have said by the method of least square the sum of square of the difference between the distance between the point to that projected curve projected straight line should be minimum so i am writing l is that function which is equal to sum of as the distance measured only in vertical line so y minus of k0 plus k1x this one square this should be minimum for this l represents this l represents the minimal function by fisher and <clears throat> that is summation of from i from 1 sir 0 to n y i minus k0 plus k1 this one square what is k0 and what is k1 these are the values to be determined by the process that is method of least squares so as we are saying <clears throat> this value should be minimum by the concept of maximum likelihood approach if i'll just find del l if i find as there is involvement of two variables so if i'll find the partial derivative this one with respect to x so this value will be twice summation i starts from 0 to n y i minus k0 plus k1x if i have just find the partial derivative with respect to y then del l by del y i that should be also 2 into summation of y i minus k0 plus k1 into x into 1 so if i are just taking but here <clears throat> another two variables are there because we want to minimize this concept for the value of k0 and k1x not for x and y, xi and yi because these are xi whatever the values that are given values and correspondingly we can able to calculate the value of yi so these are not the variables right now because these are given values known values so depending upon which one that this function will be minimized l will be minimized depending upon b0 and b1 that are known to be parameters okay so that next try, try to find del l by del b0 so that is sorry del <coughs> by k0 del l by del k0 so that will be twice into summation y i minus k0 plus k1x this one multiplied by minus 1 so minus i am taking to this side and then del l by del k1 so that will be 2 into summation of y i minus k0 plus k1x k1x i sorry multiplied by how much xi because xi is a value that is almost given so that is into xi so these two equations whatever we have got if we we'll go on simplifying if we we'll go on simplifying okay because the values of xi are known yi is correspondingly is known so if we we'll go on simplifying we can able to find the value of so simplifying these two equation 
we can able to find the value of k1 in numerical form so what will be the value if we we'll simplify this one you will get the value of <coughs> or if i'll just ask you how you are getting this one you see whatever the two equations you are getting by con by multiplying approach we can equate the coefficients of k0 and k1 correspondingly by cancellation method we can solve it so what will be the value of beta beta 1 you will get the value of beta 1 to be summation xi into yi minus 1 by n into summation of xi into summation of yi divided by summation of xi square minus 1 by n into summation of xi that one's complete one square okay complete one means totally summation square okay you just see whatever the two equations i have written here if i am multiplying here xi i must get certain things here i am multiplying here yi i must get certain things so that these two coefficients are same we can also these two coefficients will be same we can able to cancel this one and we can able to get the value of b1 beta1 or sorry k1 okay after getting k1 then as you know <clears throat> the mean value of x that is denoted by x bar is nothing but 1 divided by the total number of independent variables over summation over xi sum of the entire independent variables divided by n will give you the mean value of x likewise y i bar is nothing but 1 divided by n plus summation over the entire dependent value that is summation of y i divided by n so we are getting the mean value of x we are getting the mean value of y okay so after getting k1 we can able to find the value of beta 0 that is nothing but y mean of y yi minus beta 1 into x bar sorry x or x bar you can write so that you can able to find the value of beta 0 and beta 1 by this procedure so previously sorry i have taken k0 so k0 and k1 as k0 is known k1 is known so that the regressional line should be k0 plus y equal to k0 plus k1x so am i clear of this one how you are calculating so only just try to follow the calculational steps <coughs> what i have already stated so only just try to keep what is method of least square and then try <coughs> don't try to go through the derivations simply keep it in mind what is the formula for finding k1 what is the formula for finding k0 and then find because the entire data x and y will be given to you will be given you have to find the regressional curve okay the regressional curve means only simply you have to find a column like this you have better you should go for calculation you should use tables tables means you should use a table like this table right all this exercise here okay in another column right all this y i here then here third column you should write here x i 
square also y i square then x i y i okay the column should be maintained like this first one is x i second one is y i then x i square y i square x i y i so then in the bottom you should make a row like this summation of x i summation of y i summation of x i square summation of y square y i square then summation of x i y i so if for maintaining a table it will be easy for you to calculate because you are using a calculator by writing the data as independent variables first x i just try to find their sum by <coughs> using your calculator putting the values whatever given the values of y i try to find out in the binet you should write summation of y i find x i square in individual cases and final at the bottom you should write summation of x i square like this all others then put the values whatever got in from this table put it so easily you can get k1 and next you can easily get to get, get k0 put these values so y will be here k0 plus k1x as you know what is the nature of this curve it is linear in nature okay because y equal to mx plus c what is the nature of the curve it is a straight line that's what we are saying linear regressional curves okay but normally <clears throat> but what are the properties of regressional curve generally generally the mean value of the independent variables as well as dependent variables lies on the same curve the first property is whatever the regressional curves we are getting okay the mean value of the independent variable as well as the dependent variable lies on the same curve or lies on the same line okay that implies your x bar or x i bar y bar or y i bar must satisfy that <clears throat> regressional curve okay what is the second property the second property is we can get two regressional curves what are they one is y on x y on x the regressional line or regressional coefficient on of y on x that is written to be bxy sorry byx and another one is bxy what is bxy bxy is simply known to be the regressional coefficient or the coefficient of regression of that curve which is on x of y first one is of y on x second one is of x on y that implies when you are thinking x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable we can get a regressional curve and whenever you are thinking y is the independent variable and x is the dependent variable we will get another regressional curve there we are calculating the regressional coefficient of x on y but previous previous to that one whatever we have discussed there you can get the so this byx is nothing but r into sigma y by sigma x and this b of xy is nothing but r of multiplied by sigma x by 
sigma y. Then question arises, what this R represents? This R is your correlation coefficient. Because from the very beginning I have said they are interrelated. Regression and correlation, correlation are very much interrelated. Okay. And then what is sigma x? What is sigma x? Sigma x is your standard deviation of the population. Okay. What is sigma y? Standard deviation of y. Okay. Then, <clears throat> and its square is nothing but the variance correspondingly. If I am writing here sigma square x, that means the variance with respect to x. Sigma square y. I think someone also writing sigma of y y. That means the variance with respect to y. Sigma x x means the variance with respect to x. And this one square root is nothing but standard deviation. And particularly for the population. Then question arises. As we are getting the entire values, these are all samples. So in statistics, we are dealing with two concepts. One is sample. Other one is population. Okay. <clears throat> so what is sample? And what is population? And what is the difference between these two? Because in statistics, Samples as well as populations, both are, the properties of both are very much similar. But how we can define sample and how we can define population? A small example I am giving. Let us consider a investigator or let us consider there is a survey, election survey is there. So there are so many candidates are there in a constituency, okay? Then, the company or the surveyor who is surveying that who will be the winner or who will be the loser. Because in a constituency, the number of voters are 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs are like this. So it is not possible at all to go to door to door and make a survey considering the entire people or entire that 10 lakhs or 20 lakhs people. So he just, or the company or the server do one thing, what he does, he, <clears throat> he just collectively, he just collect some data out of that population. He just collect or select some people, maybe some different category of people, just like uh, service holders, Farmers, in different housewife, in woman category, housewife, served wife, like this. Senior citizens, all this. So whatever he selects the people and collects their opinion. So whatever he selects, he selects randomly, arbitrarily. <coughs> and then takes their opinion. After taking their opinion, he then gives, this fellow will be the winner and he will get this much percent of votes. This person will be the loser. He will get this much percent of votes. So during my, during this concept or example, I have said that the surveyor or the company concern collects randomly some people and then takes their opinion. So that the surveyor who is selecting some data randomly is known to be the sample. Okay. And whatever the conclusion he draws from the sum from them by considering their opinion. Okay. That particular opinion 
by virtue of that opinion he is saying that this person will be the winner that means it is satisfying for the entire constituency constituency or not so that the entire population or entire constituency people are known to be the population okay so what is sample then samples are the randomly or arbitrarily selected data items okay using which conclusion or inference can be drawn okay so what are samples samples are the randomly selected or arbitrarily selected data values using which conclusion or inference can be drawn okay and population is the entire mass that is under consideration okay the entire mass that is which that is under consideration okay so here i have simply written here r into sigma y by sigma x so r is the correlation coefficient sigma x is the <clears throat> standard deviation of the population with respect to y sigma x <clears throat> is the standard deviation with respect to x are concerning to x of the population what is its counterpart countermap part means what is the what will be in case of sample sy so sy represents the standard deviation with respect to y and sx will represent the standard deviation with respect to x of the sample okay likewise somewhere we can write s square y or s y y is the variance with respect to of the sample with respect to y likewise either somewhere it is written s square x or s x x is the variance of the sample with respect to x okay and the <coughs> value of ssx <coughs> sxx likewise if i am writing here sxy that is known to be your covariance covariance because as two variables are intact that's why it is known to be your covariance so what is the formula for covariance sxy that is equal to 1 divided by n minus of 1 into summation of xi minus of x bar into yi minus of y bar likewise what is the value of <clears throat> s x square that is 1 divided by n minus of 1 into summation xi minus of x bar this one square where summation starts from 0 to n likewise s y square or s s y y is nothing but 1 divided by n minus of 1 summation y i minus of y bar this one square where summation varies from or i varies from 0 to n okay so almost we we have learned how to find the regressional line for or by applying the method of least square that formulation i have given or we have already discussed but question arises that particular approach we are getting is there any other approach for this one or for finding this one yes there is some other approach what is that one goodness of it and that is otherwise known to be the calculational approach of for finding regressional curves what is that one <clears throat> by virtue of that one 
the equation of regression is defined to be y minus of y bar is equal to chi 1 or better you can say k 1 into x minus of x bar. <clears throat> So what is y bar? The mean value of y. What is x bar? The mean value of x. So what is k1? This r k1. This k1 or k1 is known to be the coefficient of regression. Coefficient of regression. How we can able to calculate <coughs> the value of k1? Or have the value of chi 1? So the value of chi 1 is nothing but Yes, sorry for interruption because signal was very poor. <clears throat> so what is the value of chi 1? This chi 1 is defined to be Sxy divided by <clears throat> Sxx. Okay, so what is Sxy? Sxy is known to be your covariance. So that is nothing but 1 by n minus of 1, as already I have said. And this SXX is nothing but the variance with respect to x. That is 1 divided by n minus of 1 into summation over xi minus of x bar square. So after getting this one, almost we have got the value of y bar as well as x bar. So putting that one, we can able to find the values or we can be able to find the lines of regression. Okay. So that by any approach, because the method is not mentioned at all, you can take any approach, either by that approach or by this approach in order to find in order to find you can take any approach in order to find the regressional curves. Okay. So next, whenever we are considering this one, <clears throat> next thing is, next, we are just trying to finding the value of K1. So those who have not, because the net connection is very poor. So by this method, the equation of regression is y minus of y bar is equal to chi 1 or k 1 into x minus of x bar. So what is y bar? y bar is mean value of y, x bar is mean value of x and this chi 1 that is known to be your coefficient of regression which is defined to be s x y divided by s x x so what is s s x y that is covariance of the sample so that is defined to be 1 divided by n minus of 1 why n minus of 1 because the total number of data values are n so 1 divided by n minus of 1 summation x i minus of x bar multiplied by y i minus of y bar and then in the denominator, 
We have written here S X X. What is S X X? The variance with respect to X, and this one is nothing but one divided by n minus of one summation X I minus of X bar square. So that we can able to find the value of k k one or k one. After finding the values and putting in this expression, we can able to find the values, or we can able to find the value for or the equation of regression. So as already I have said, there are two lines of regression we are getting. One is one is of y on x, another one is x on y, and both of them must intersect. At certain points, if they are intersecting, if they are intersecting each other, so they must maintain a angle. What is that angle? So angle between them is theta. That should be equal to tan inverse r square minus of one. Divided by r into sigma x into sigma y divided by sigma x square plus sigma y square. So then, question arises: How we can able to find the value of? How we can able to find the value of <coughs> r square and r? You see. As already I have said, whenever <clears throat> two equations are given, using the, those two equations, we can able to find the value of x bar, the value of y bar, the value of b x y as well as b y x, and from that part, we can able to calculate <clears throat> the value of. We can able to calculate the value of r square as well as r. How we are calculating? Let us consider one of a question in this regard. So that question. So I am taking page number fifty four. So the question is given <clears throat> in a partial destroyed laboratory. Record of analysis. Of correlating data, the following results only are legible. Legible, where the variance of x is given to be nine. Page number fifty-four. Please go through that one. So two equations are given. One of the equation is given to be eight x minus ten y plus sixty-six equal to zero. Another equation is given forty x. Minus eighteen y minus two hundred fourteen equal to zero. So the question is asking find the mean of x and mean value of x and y. Second part is asking find the correlation coefficient between x and y. Then it is asking the standard deviation of y. So whatever the two equations are given here. The first equation is given to be eight x minus ten y plus sixty six equal to zero. So what is the value of y here? Can I write here the value of y to be y to be eight uh, by ten into x plus sixty six by ten? Okay. In the second equation. If I ask to find x, whatever the value of x, that is equal to 18 by 40 into y plus 214 divided by 40. Okay. So if I just considering the first expression and just try to See that whatever the equation is, is it taking the form of 
y is equal to k0 plus k1x or not? And second equation, whatever you have got, is it taking the form of x equal to some uh, beta 0, sorry, beta 0 plus beta 1 y or not? So that in the first equation, we can say this 8 by 10 is nothing but the correlation coefficient of y on x so that that is simply equal to byx by the formula that is same to be your r into sigma y by sigma x and that is nothing but 8 by 10. Okay. In the second equation, you have got 18 by 40. What is that one? Bxy. So that is simply to be r into sigma x by sigma y. So that is equal to 18 by 40. So if you are multiplying these two, how much you are getting? Are you getting a r square or not? So what is the value of r square there? So r square is equal to 8 by 10 into 18 by 40. So whatever the value you are getting then? 3 by 5 perhaps. Just go on calculating. <clears throat> so that is 4 by 5. This one is 9 by 20. So again, 4, 4, this can be 5. So 9 by 25. So R square, we are getting 9 by 25. So what will be the value of R? R is equal to 3 by 5. So what is R? <clears throat> the correlation coefficient. So next part of the question it is asking, the value of sigma y is given to be 4. And the question is asking, what should be the value of sigma x? So as the value of r already you have <coughs> already you have got here 3 by 5 and the value of sigma y is given putting that equation values here can you able to calculate the value of sigma x or not are you almost you have got r into sigma y by sigma x <coughs> equal to 8 by 10 the value of r you have got 3 by 5 and the value of sigma y is given to be 4 so just putting here 3 by 5 into 4 divided by sigma x is equal to 8 by 10. So now we can just see here. So are you getting the value of sigma x to be equal to 3 or not? Okay. And next one is the question is you was asking what is the mean value of x and mean value of y? Simply whatever the two equations you have got, as already in the first property I have said, the mean values of x as well as y and y must satisfy these two equations. That implies if you will just solve these two equations, you will get <coughs> the value of x as well as the value of y. So whatever the value of x you are getting, that will be the mean value of x. And whatever the value of y you are getting, that will be the mean value of y. Okay. Next. Am I clear of this fact? <clears throat> Next. As we have just got the calculational approach for finding the regressional lines. But question our question sometimes asks that how far 
the regressional line fits or how far the regressional curve fits the given data values or not. So in order to justify the same, whatever the value of chi1 you have got, that value may be positive, may not be positive, may, may be negative, but finding square, if the value is lying in between 0 to 1, okay, and whenever the value of that chi1 square or uh, <coughs> chi1 square is should be less than 1 and should be greater than 0. But whenever it is very close to 1, 0.9 or greater than that, but lying in between 1, we are saying that it is a best fit curve. Am I clear? If the value, whatever you have got here, I have just given you. So whatever the value chi1 you have got, sxy divided by sxx. If you are taking, the value may be positive, may be negative. But finding k square, k1 square, certainly it will be positive. And the value should be and must be, must lie in between 0 to 1. But whenever the value of k1 square is greater than 0 0.9, but less than 1, we are saying the regressional curve is a best fit curve. And whenever it is lying in between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8, we are saying it is moderately fitted curve. And if it is below 0 0.5, we are saying, what will say? Less fitted curve, poorly fitted curve. Okay. So next part we will come to <clears throat> residual analysis. So what do you mean by residual analysis? Let us consider we are wanting to make a best fit curve. Whatever the <coughs> order pairs are, uh, we have got, using those order pairs, we want to find a linear or a regressional curve, which will take the, which will, <coughs> best fit means what? Which will take more and more points from those other pairs. Okay. Let us consider the line or the regressional line is given. And we are just getting some other pairs around that one in your scatter diagram. As you have said, the distance is calculated in the least square approximation. We have already mentioned that the distance maintained only in vertical direction. Okay. So in order to that one, let us consider that the curve is given to be y equal to sum k0 plus k1x. The value of k0 and k1 is known to us. And a particular line, let us consider the particular point is given. Let us consider that particular point is this one. So what is the vertical distance? This is the vertical distance. So putting a line, as I have just drawn a dotted line, which is parallel to x-axis, means those points that have a very good, good fit with this regressional line, and that particular one is assumed as this particular point. Then above that one, whatever we have got, they have given poor fitment. So poor fitment is somehow known to be the error or <coughs> erratical regression. So that erratical regression or error some regression, we are simply getting. So whatever the points or whatever the other pairs you have got, that is known, <coughs> known to be the residues and finding those points which are above this one 
is known to be, or the concept is known to be your residual analysis. Okay. Sometimes this comes as a set question, but you should keep it in mind for going to those type of curves. And <clears throat> because the problem that already I have discussed, that type of problems you are getting. Another one is also, I'll give you maybe tomorrow because there was a question previous year question <clears throat> that was finding the angle between two regressional lines. I'll say that give you that question, that answer of that question. That it is asking what is the value of <clears throat> or what is the angle between these two um, regressional curves that already I have discussed how to find theta is equal to tan inverse r square minus 1 divided by r into sigma x into sigma y divided by sigma x square plus sigma y square. This is the entire concept of this one, regression and correlation. Okay. So next is, whenever you are considering non-linear regression, non-linear regression means that are not linear. So the number of variables may be more than one. Certainly it will be more than one. Or if you are getting you are getting some other kinds of curves, maybe exponential curves, maybe logarithmic curves, maybe any other type of curves. There is simply nothing else. The calculational processes apply either if it is an exponential curve, apply logarithmic approach. Okay. If it is <clears throat> if it is a logarithmic curve, so set your calculator and calculate that one. After finding that one, try to use the concept of this one, this previous discussions, and apply directly. You can get those curves. Okay. This is all about regression and correlation. <clears throat> Shall I go through normal distribution? Then why? Time is there. Shall I go through normal distribution? Hello. 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 Now, go through normal distribution. Because regression and correlation up to this extent you have got in your course. Shall I go through normal distribution? Okay. <clears throat> so, if you are intending to go through probability, In probability, we have two types of variables. Okay. One is, so generally we have, depending upon random variables. Hello. Achha. So, depending upon the type of variables, random variables, we have got two types of distribution. One is Discrete random variable. We have two types of random variables. One is discrete random variable. Another one is continuous random variable. Okay. So this <clears throat> normal distribution or Gauss distribution is a continuous distribution. So how and why we are saying it comes under continuous distribution? As you know, the variables, as we have defined, there are two types of variable. One is discrete. So as the name is discrete, that means which are distinguished, that are completely individuals. That's why the name is discrete. 
under the discrete, we are getting Poisson distribution, binomial distribution, and hypergeometric distributions. That is in your course. <clears throat> and in this continuous random variable, depending upon the continuous random variable, we are getting Gauss distribution or normal distribution. And another one is, what do you have? <clears throat> So in case of normal <coughs> distribution, so generally the variable is almost standardized because what do you mean by standardized? Let us consider some of the variables whose mean value is known and which sigma is known. Sigma means what is sigma? <coughs> The standard deviation is known. So we can, whatever the random variable or continuous random variable is given, we can able to standardize that one. That by means of a formula that is x minus of mu divided by sigma. By standardize this one means we are converting that variable to the Gauss form or to the normal random variable form. By standardize that one, <clears throat> we can able to use the normal distribution table that is given in our book or we can get it for finding the corresponding probability measure for the set random variables or the, for the set normal for the set normal random variables. The formulation is the given variable minus of mu divided by sigma. What this mu represents? Mu represents mean of the continuous random variable. Sigma represents standard deviation of the corresponding variable. Okay? <clears throat> so by using that one, we can able to find the standardized value and that standardized value is denoted by your z. So phi of phi of that function that is phi of z whose probability values we can able to calculate by using the tables. Okay. Then there are certain discrete, <coughs> discrete random variables which also can be converted to this continuous random variable form. Because whenever we are getting binomial distributions or Poisson distributions, this binomial distribution or Poisson distribution that also when the population grows, the number of data values will grow. It can be converted to normal distribution form by considering some standardized formula. <coughs> by considering some standardized formula. So what is that standardized formula? As for example, <clears throat> I'm saying, let us consider a dice is, a fair dice is thrown five times. So that we can able to say <clears throat> five times means number of throws are countable. So we are considering first one as discrete. But let us consider someone is saying, the number of dice has thrown 1,000 times. <clears throat> 1,000 times or more than that. So in order to calculate by using this, the methods <clears throat> of discrete random variables, it is quite difficult. For that reason, <clears throat> we are considering or trying to convert the same to continuous form in order to get the desired result. Okay. This is all for today. We'll think something else.